Hello, I'm Mirza Season. Welcome to my show, TikTok, where we talk about what makes successful people tick and what it took for them to pursue their passions, follow their dreams, and achieve their goals. My guest today is a Philippine history rock star. He makes history fun and entertaining, yet relevant and meaningful. And he presents it in an eye-opening, thought-provoking, and hopefully action-inducing way, which he says makes constipated academics frown. His mission to bring history down from the academic ivory tower and give it back to the people where it also belongs. It's my honor to welcome today celebrated Filipino historian, best-selling author of over 37 books, curator, Ateneo de Manila professor, and Philippine Daily Inquirer columnist, Mr. Ambeth Ocampo. Hi, Hi Ambeth. Hey. Hi, nice to see you. How are you? Happy New Year. Yeah, I'm flattered you asked me to come on. Um, I, I wouldn't more. have made it to the center <laughs> for the <of> Cosmo. <laughs> uh, you you so are uh, the TikTok hunk of today. So <laughs> 2020 is history. Good riddance, ba? What did we all learn or should have learned? Well, I think most of us naman have seen that the world has changed. We will not go back to old normal, so we have to right. live with it. Um, I mean, one of my worst uh, investments for last year was a planner and a desk planner. <laughs> the first time I ever bought one because uh, things were becoming very hectic and uh, sometimes I would double book um engagements no, because i don't have a, <laughs> you don't have an assistant so i said if you have this big desk planner uh it will be i mean you can see it right away no but right then, and your best investment, investment was well, a ring light and a mic <laughs> well those uh, i didn't invest in those no so sandra ramos my publisher sent them she's very uh, very very um how would you say this uh supportive of her writers and um, right. i guess she just wants me to keep writing even during the pandemic it's a uh, the nice thing about the pandemic was that uh you get to do many things it's it's soul searching uh when people ask me what i did during the pandemic i tell them that um well i fixed the house um you can see the library that's not uh that's not a made-up background. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my library uh, was arranged, and uh, one of my one of the things I'm proud of is I actually did the slideshow for my funeral. You no, know? um, what? And uh, people were saying how morbid, naman. But I was telling my my nieces, you know, I I won't trust you to make the slideshow. You'll yeah, probably no choose, <laughs> diba? Choose some awful photo of me so at least have a, this way i can control how i am seen when i die you know? so i mean it's a it's a way for us to take stock and uh, if, if people use that time to to see where they are where they where they're going where they want to go uh on the whole it's been it's been good for most people you know? Right. And while we, we were all merely trying to survive, you as a historian were busy recording history. So are you indeed writing the pandemic volume of Looking Back? <laughs> no, actually, well, it's one of the things that the pandemic taught me. You know, uh, it, it just jump-started what I was already thinking of uh, maybe a few years ago. That, oh, really? uh, I wanted to do a, a Glenn Gold. It is this Canadian, eccentric Canadian pianist who gave, who retreated from public uh, concertizing uh, locked himself in a studio and recorded the entire bach you no know? and um, i said maybe that's the way that we should go because i mean when i used to lecture in the ayala museum um the the makati fire department about 2 years ago declared me a fire hazard oh my um, god simply because you know we would have 800 people on a good day, 800 people 800 paying people who would come on a saturday to listen about history so i knew there was there was something there but people were saying you cannot you can't lecture to a live audience all the time so i I've, I've been right. toying about thinking about retreating into a studio and just doing recordings right. you know? and um, because of the shift to online teaching I had to do, you know, I realized that it's okay to come to a classroom and you chat for an hour, 
uh, that works. But when right. you record, I mean, to do a uh, to do a fifteen minute recording takes about two hours because you keep rewinding. I mean, I made a mistake here. You re rewind, cover, um, and so it uh, it made me realize that it's a totally different platform. And right. uh, when when I did my class, which, which was last August, my first online class, I thought it would be easy because I said, "Ay, nako, I'll just I'll just steal from YouTube and put it in my syllabus." No, and uh, when I looked at it, I realized that there is no reliable Philippine history to be found on oh, YouTube. Wow. Or like I'm teaching a Rizal course, and when I looked at it, there's no reliable Rizal stuff here, and that's when it dawned on me that uh, this is a, this is an arena in which I have to engage. Do I right. leave this with, you know, people who just, you know, they're entertaining because it's it's gossipy, it's counterfactual, it's conspiracy theory. But we cannot leave it. We cannot leave the arena to to that. Right. And most constipated academics um, will will think that that's uh, not the way to go. So I right. decided uh, last year that I, I have to engage. And uh, so I'm thinking of a YouTube channel. So we're already uh, thinking <laughs> of to do that and uh, to actually get my website on. I mean, like when I, uh, I mean, kinarir ko yung Facebook page, then I realized na the Super engagement is, is, is very big. No, So um, I mean, I only have what, a hundred and... Only followers. Which, I mean, that's not Chris Aquino numbers, no. But uh, wow. <laughs> when you think about it, for an academic historian, most of them will probably not even get ten friends, no. Um, oh, it, it's good enough. And so when I when I started, you know, thinking and you know, thinking of what to post, then I realized that it's it's actually growing very fast and uh, right. so people have contacted me and said you know we we looked at your page uh it's organic which means you're not even paying or boosting and it's growing so you have something there that you have to take care of my my only problem there is the beast has to be fed every day yeah. um, and that's why you know these are the things now i have to think about i have to help get somebody to help me post the things or i mean once a uh, once a week or once a month, we'll post for the entire month. Uh, it has to be more organized. No, that's the. Right. That's it. I mean, but I do you're it. But doing a pretty I, good job. Your Instagram and Facebook are updated almost daily. Every I think. day, every day, yeah. But uh, and that's all you. And need. I actually and actually answer. You no, know, uh, yes. the comments. You no, know? so I mean, even the Facebook page. That was the funny part. I never was into Facebook, and one of my nieces said, "You know, uh, Tito, there's a." Uh, there are a number of Ambet Ocampo pages, so I looked them up. Of course, they were all fake, right? Oh my and God. there was there was one where when I read the comments, people were getting upset and parang, is this really Ambet Ocampo? Why? Yeah. Uh, we were messaging, you're not minding us, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I sent a message to the administrator saying, this is Ambet Ocampo. Uh, They're real. I want, to, I want to know why you did this page, etc. And so the person replied and just said, you know, I like your work, so I set it up uh, to make your work more more visible. And if you accept my friend request, I will transfer administration to you, and then I will disappear. And that's oh. how my that's how my page came about. And then when I took it over, ayon, uh, it it started to engage. You know? So it's, right. uh, I mean, there's a there's a nurse in Cebu uh, whose mission is only to put to put my columns every week on on a page you no know? so there's an ambet ocampo page which is just my writing and i don't even know who the, well i know it's a nurse in cebu you no know? but who takes the trouble to do it for me so um, i think it's it's time that we i engage here and hopefully monetize right. Ambet Ocampo in 2021. No? So, right. Uh, I mean, if uh, making history accessible is your mission, you got to be where people have access. Yeah, right? that's true. Right. And then uh, would you say that your historical perspective on pandemics through the centuries helped you cope better and adapt to this one? Anything enlightening about what you know about pandemics past that can give us hope? Well, I guess, you know, humankind survived more, 
bigger pandemics than this one. Right. And, um, you know, I think, well, I, I'm, I'm sorry for people who know people who are actually sick or people who have lost uh, friends or relatives who have died. But when I looked at it, I mean, just to be philosophical about it, I felt it was, this was nature calling itself, uh, getting rid of of people. No, So it's it, it sounds heartless, but that's how nature goes yeah, and uh, after a while i said you know i shouldn't complain i mean my, the only thing i was glad about was that my father who passed away last year at 94 uh we were saying you know if we had to bring him to dialysis three times a week to a hospital it would have been yeah. hell but right. i remember you know before he died there's so many things in the world that we would rant about you no know? um rant about government rant about how incompetent things are I mean, that's why one of my favorite places in the world is Tokyo because I like it's near. I go there four or five times a year because I want to be in a place where things work right. uh, and uh, and get depressed when you come home. Deba. But when, when I ranted, I was ranting once and then my father said, you don't know what you're saying. And I said, why, why, why shouldn't we complain? And then he just looked at me and he says, you don't know what you're talking about. I survived the war. You don't know what it is like when, when I mean, every day is actually maybe your last day, you know. Uh, right. So he says all of these things you're complaining about is nothing. And, you know, when he said that, it, it changed my perspective totally. I mean, uh, to make you live every day like it's your last and uh, try to make the most of a bad situation. I mean, I mean, we can spend centuries just ranting but that doesn't right. get us doesn't doesn't get us anywhere so i'd like to be right. someone who does you know in your own little way i can't change the world but in my own little pocket i do something which i think is relevant so in that right. way you're you should be happy you know so instead you got productive kind of like rizal in exile by you use the downtime to streamline your famous library which we see behind you tell us about your library and is it true na bumabagsak na yung sahig dyan dahil no, sa big when, when i moved <laughs> when i moved to a condo um my uh, my father already told me you cannot put all the books in one room because they're too heavy. Books have to be on the wall, which is load bearing. Oh, you cannot put them okay. uh, in rows. Na naka jut out. And then I said that I said that that's four feet of concrete, no. Uh, and then of course he just says I designed the building. Don't argue with me. Oh, I'm telling okay. you it it's heavy. Uh, so for many uh, two or three years. I actually rented a house in Bel Air and my condo unit wow. was empty. You no, know? so just eventually, for just for the books. And eventually I said, Wag na, I'll move na lang anyway. If it does collapse, it will collapse on the person below me, not me. <laughs> um, but then it's that. It uh, it's it's forced me also to to call, you no, know? uh, which is why I avoid book sale. You no. Know? Um, oh. I, I don't like falling into the rabbit hole because books you can <laughs> books you cannot refuse, diba? Books are hard to give away. But I've actually called so many things. So all my rare books in 2003 were sold to Kyoto University. So there's an Ambeto Campo collection in Kyoto University. My father was very upset because he says, <laughs> you know, it's not patriotic of you to allow this collection to leave the car i said you know uh, you won't in you won't advance my inheritance i need the money <laughs> so i'll sell it no so anyway we sold that i sold that and then um before i moved here from bel air uh there were about ten thousand volumes which first i sent to the national library and then when that loan expired i donated them to Holy Angel University in Angeles. No, uh, I'm not. We're from Pampanga, but not from Angeles. But I felt, you know, the UP Library, Ateneo, they'll probably have most of the books. But right. if you give it to an institution that's sort of outside Manila, then you give them something valuable. So they have a 10,000 volume Filipiniana collection there. So what I kept in my house is basically all my standard, the things I need for my work. But right. Over the years, I've been I've been scanning, downloading things. So okay. I carry I carry my entire library on an external drive. Diba? So <laughs> I, well, in January I backed up on four different drives. But you know, you I I do wonder. No, I mean in the past I was very 
antiquarian in the sense that I, you know, I wanted the first edition. But now, if I have a digital copy, that's good enough right. because it's uh, it's one of the ironies of my life that I'm actually allergic to book dust. Um, oh. So for a historian to be allergic to the very source of your livelihood is is God's it's God's joke, de ba? Um, but but I deal with it. So now this is this is basically it. No, and I keep I keep uh, culling the books. So it's it's also nice to to get rid of some. But you know that's that's the thing. You know, you bring me to a book sale, and <laughs> I will I will buy. And you know, I've I've also learned that the best books in a book sale are always the ones outside Manila. So right. when I go to Cebu or go to Bacolod, right. that's where you'll find all the the books you want. Right. But again, I guess I'm getting older, so <laughs> I just need books that uh, books that I can use. You no, know? you right. can read them. You can read them all. I mean, it's the standard question people enter, and then parang nabasa mo ba lahat yan? Oh, oh, nabasa ko na. Um, because people always think that you you have to open a book and read it to the end, which is not which is not true. Some books you read cover to cover. Some books you dip into a few pages. Some books, like for work, I just need the citation. Um, so you change gears while while reading. No, I uh, I grew up in a house with books, and I always get nervous when I enter a house without books. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> what does it say uh, about the but yun yun the only place that we don't have books is the bedroom. Uh, right. We have no bedroom, no cell phone. Oh. In, the, in the long time, we had no TV in the bedroom. So you just sleep. But now, because of Netflix binging, I right. had to move the TV there. No? So um, it's changed. But no, still no books. No? So, um, what books does your childhood the- like in Pampanga, besides the book, so you're the son of an engineer and a jeweler. What was it like, and what made you such a curious boy? Yeah, actually, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, it's my cousins, my more famous cousins, like Rico, uh, who 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 grew up in Pampanga. Oh, I only went there for summers. No, I was oh. born in Manila. My okay. father was the was the black sheep of the family because oh. I mean I come from a. I come from a line of shopkeepers. No, um, the Ocampos made their fortune on appliance stores, pawn shops, and uh, jewelry. Um, but my father was an engineer. Decided to follow his vocation. So my grandfather was not very happy. He used to scold me and tell me, you know, your father, you know, disobeyed me, and he. he He's, he's, he's the most useless one because he's an employee. You should never be an employee. You should be an entrepreneur and be your own boss. And eventually, my father became the wealthiest of them all. No, so that that sort of changed my uh, my grandfather's thing. But my father, I I know that I won't be as uh, rich as he was. But uh, it's one of the things that my father said very early that you may not become as rich as I am, but you will grow up knowing that you will not starve. So you can do whatever it is that you want to do. For wow. me, that was the that was the best gift of all. No, I mean people right. never never understood what I was like. I mean, you know, my cousins are very entrepreneurial and um, you know, people never understood. Yan si Ambet nasa bahay lang, nagbabasa, <laughs> di ba? Hindi anong klaseng trabaho yan, di ba? Uh, <laughs> Nine to five, I mean, hindi mo pumapasok, di ba? Nakahiga lang, na kumukuting-ting lang sa computer niya. But I mean, uh, in later life, that's when they realized that uh, may, ginagawa. Whatever, so may ginagawa pala ako. No? And it's something that I think is, uh, they realized later is valuable. No? So What did you dream of doing when you grew up, when you were a child? Well, I didn't, I'm an accidental historian. No, I um, right. I didn't want to be, well, when I went to college, I took poli sci because I thought I wanted to go into law. You no, know? right. and uh, eventually I moved to interdisciplinary studies, which in the Ateneo is for people who have no direction. Right. Um, and in our time, we were the first IS majors. It was such a wonderful program because you could design your own program, and uh, that's why I'm. I guess I would have been unemployable because if the if the employer looks at my 
transcript and then you'll see astronomy, Philippine <laughs> film, a Japanese culture, golf. I mean, I, what, what kind of person will this be? You know? uh, but I'd like to think it made, it made me more human, allowed me to explore many things. Um, and then I, didn't, I only became a historian because uh, I started writing in 85 for the Daily yeah, Express really? under Milet Manangkil. Um, and at the time, you know, it was Marcos period, things were controlled and history seemed safe. Diba? Um, mm. And that's when I realized that I could actually comment on the present by using the past. Right. So if, if, right. if there was a problem, I hindi naman today yan, you know, that's a hundred <laughs> years ago. <laughs> and uh, that's when I also realized that the way that history has been presented, it's always so boring. And I'd like to think that maybe because I started in a, mag a Sunday magazine and then the guy in the next table was Ricky Lo. Um, oh. And, you know, we would we would race with our deadlines, diba? Right. Who would finish first. And I would watch him, diba? He'd be in the office, he'd talk on the phone, then he'd always write the cover story with some girl in a bikini for the cover no uh, and sabi ko parang you know you you ha i learned that you had to engage uh you had to engage the reader they 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 should read you they shouldn't turn the page and i guess that's what made my history what it is it became friendly uh it became fun uh which is why uh academics are not so pleased with it because Right. And I, I purposely don't write for journals because anyway, if they're good at that, let them do that. Then leave me alone. But I mean, uh, how many people actually read a journal? Technically, right. uh, the editor and two referees. Who else? No one. But, you know, and then here you are writing for a large, you know, interested audience. So it became a habit that um, I had to make sure that the reader is entertained and the reader learns something in the end. So that has always been the formula. So my influence uh, pala si Ricky Lo, but the bigger influences were Teodoro Agoncillo, Carmen Guerrero Nakpil, and Emilio Aguilar Cruz. Yeah. You say that you, they inspired and pushed you to write about history. How did that happen? Well, that's the funny part also. All my friends were my own. Uh, although they were much older than me, you no, know? uh, they weren't my they weren't my parents' friends. Uh, I picked them up along the way. Uh, Abe Cruz was the the biggest influence because at the time that you know Larry Cruz was building the restaurant empire, the father was bored and uh, you know took his took his time you know being with young people. You no, know? so it's not just me. He, he uh, my cousins Rico and Raymond. Uh, you know, younger journalists like Elvira Mata and Nice Rodriguez, you know, people who worked under Emmy Velarde, uh, he surrounded himself with young people, got energized by young people. And so by going with him, um, you know, I, I started to learn French because of him. I started to read. He would, he would give me books to read every day. And um, I used to complain and said, Parang, you have, I think you have an exaggerated view of how fast I read. And he says, no, you have to finish a book a day because this is this is that generation. I mean, I don't know if you've met them, but in the 80s when I joined the newspaper, the old editors were like that. They would read right. a, pocket, a pocket book every day for fun, diba? And uh, <clears throat> throw it away. Uh, but we're not made like that anymore. But that was it. No, He, he forced me to, to, to read and then through him, that's where I met uh, Mrs. Nakpil, Agoncillo, and the others. And I like to think that it was also luck because, uh, you know, Hilda Fernando, Mrs. Nakpit, all it would have taken would be a frown. Uh, and I probably would not have written, but, you know, they probably saw promise somewhere. Uh, so they, they were nice and encouraging. And that's why I started uh, doing the things that I do. You know? um, they, they, you, I mean, Abby Cruz used to say, you know, you can't be the young boy with promise the rest of your life. You know, you have oh. to do, you have to do something. You know, so, right. and that's it. So he, um, he was the one who introduced me to Millet uh, when the Daily Globe opened, and he had a column. He pulled me in. He gave me, he gave me the the column name, which is Looking Back, uh, mm -hmm. because he gave you know names to other columns like Julie Dasas, Medium Rare, and. Uh, oh. People of that generation, when he was still an editor at the 
Manila Times and Daily Mirror papers. So it it, it things went went along, and uh, and then after a while writing about history, uh, I was invited to to teach. You know, um, so in in a way, I went the other way round. So I didn't. I didn't start a histor as a historian. I started as a journalist writing history, and eventually became an an academic. So that's yeah. it. I mean, most people, you know, young people in the Ateneo, we find out that there are many young people who want to take up history, but there's their, their parents tell them you won't find a job. You'll be a teacher. So right. uh, let something else do: business, economics, uh, psychology, something useful. Uh, which is why we actually have many minors in history. Uh, so people who want to pursue by taking a few extra courses, so they graduate with the useful degree with a minor in history. And um, <clears throat> most people think that, well, it's true. No, you end up as a teacher. But you know, if you're you're an academic like me and you hit the jackpot, it's actually a very comfortable job. No, when you get tenure, you can't be fired un unless you do something really crazy. Um, you get to travel on other people's money. No, um, I've lived abroad uh, on fellowships. Uh, and the nicest thing about being an academic is that we have sabbaticals. No job right. will give you, give you one year leave with pay to recharge. Diba? I mean, what what kind of a job is that? Diba? So it's it's really it's really it's. I mean, I. I feel guilty when people apply, especially when I was chair of the department and people will apply for an MA history and, you know, because I read you. And I, I always felt guilty. Now it's, <laughs> it, it's false advertising. And I, I would, I would I want to tell them na parang, you know, my career is distinctly my own. You right. will have to find yours. Uh, if, you, if you think it's easy, it's not. I mean, it looks easy. Eh? Uh, people, people only see me as I am today, they didn't see forty right. years, forty years of reading. You no, know, for example, uh, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. But it's really your unique take, like you say. My career is my your career is your own, but it's your unique take on history, plus entertainment anchored in relevant current events that has resonated so well with your readers and okay. resulted in. 37 books and how many columns i computed 3000 probably <laughs> probably more because in 98 and 99 i wrote every day for page every one day. Uh, oh my gosh so yun nga, and, and that was that used to be so funny because there was a time when i had to write the, the daily thing for page one i had my bi-weekly in the opinion page and then i had two different columns for telma so there were five well, My five God. inside columns and at every day. I mean, I'll never do it again. No, it made me wonder <laughs> how people like Max Max Sullivan could write every day, diba? and how, so long. Well, how diba? did you do it? And now, how did you become so disciplined? How well, did you I guess you you've been editor, no? I mean, when I right. when I joined the Inquirer. Uh, many people who, who are my age and you, the old inquirer, in the editorial office, there was a big sign that said, deadlines wait for no one. Uh, <laughs> then it's Eugenia Apostol, right? So that was always the terrifying. But it, yeah, I also realized as a journalist, you know, Abe Cruz used to tell me, ay, nako, you write something stupid today. Bukas pambalot na lang ng tuyo yung jaryo. So don't feel very bad about it. Bumawi ka the next, the, the next time. Right. But that's when I realized that, you know, unlike poets and novelists, I... A uh, journalist does not need a blue moon or inspiration. Your only inspiration is the deadline right. Diba? Right. and the space. I mean, the nice thing about the, which I learned from the Globe and later in the Inquirer, is that we don't have pasa pages. Na you have to begin and finish your column in the in the space. They right. won't put continue in page twenty nine. Right. No? So so it was also discipline to 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 know the word count and to make yeah. sure that. You know, that's why, in a sense, uh, they say that is the curse of a journalist, which I hope I can get rid of before I croak, is that we write short. Not Chitang Nakpil tried to write two novels. No, uh, 
Nick Joaquin also tried because we're used to writing short. Right. We don't have the discipline for a 200 page work. Um, and I only learned that when I when I went to London for for my PhD, my supervisor used to say, I just want to see you argue a point in 50 pages. So because <laughs> I, I, I never really thought of it that way. Right? <laughs> yes, you have to argue in 50 pages. So that's when I realized what what a dissertation really is. You have to write 500, pa argue in 500 pages, no? uh, which is which is what what an academic uh, degree is like. But for my uses, diba? I mean, you just need to get a little thing here and there, uh, which is also kind of bad. No, I mean, um, the late Hilda Fernando, which is why I, I wrote that short column for Telma. Uh, Hilda used to say, over the years that we would do research, we have many little nuggets. Now, when you think about it, it will only feel half a page, maybe one. You can't even force it to become a whole article, but they're interesting in themselves. So Sabnia, they must find some use. So I wrote a, a one page, uh, what was that? It was a page and a half, a very small uh, box in Telma's uh, lifestyle page for all those retasos na right. it, it would make a full column, no? But in itself, they were interesting. And those were the things I would always use. There's always, I mean, people always think history is boring. And I say, if you think history is boring, A, you didn't have a good teacher. B, you didn't have me. Um, <laughs> the, the thing there is, how can history be boring? It's about it's about human, it's about people. It's about human nature, you no? Know? And that can be the most engaging. And so when I write, I always try to find something that is, that resonates, diba? Right. Uh, and I, you know, only recently I found out that pala is the secret because I mean, I can write about the 17th century Philippines and bore everyone to death, but history gains its power when it is relevant. So right. if you're able to tie it into something right. that is uh, like, for example, pandemic, diba? Uh, vaccination. And then right. I, I, I dig up the, if you go to Intramuros in front of the Manila Cathedral, there is a statue to Charles the Fourth, and the statue was erected because he sent smallpox vaccine. Oh. Um, and it's so interesting because they got they discovered the vaccine and it was transported on live children. So from Mexico they got orphan boys and inoculated oh, them in a series para pagdating sa Manila buhay pa yung buhay pa yung vaccine. Human diba? carriers. Human carriers. And then they vaccinated people in Manila. Then they got orphan boys from Manila and brought them to Macau, brought them to China. No, So parang, when you think about it, and then we don't even know who these boys are. No, well, they, that, they got them from orphans. So no. Did they remain here? Uh, the Mexicans, I think, remain oh, okay. here. But they needed a fresh group. So they got, Filipino boys to bring them to Macau. And I guess iniwan na lang nila yun doon. But how interesting, but this whole idea na by itself, it's just, you know, old, old history. But because we have a pandemic, then we can see what it's like, di ba? Uh, this whole idea of hand washing, no count, ano yan? sing happy birthday. I mean, they taught that to us when we were children, but doesn't mean anything until we had the pandemic. And then when I look at the the American period, you study the whole idea of sanitation. They were always complaining, Ay, Manila is dirty. The Spaniards are baboy. Uh, they don't know how to throw away their waste. They don't wash their hands. So all these things now become relevant again because of the because right. of the pandemic. No? So uh, it's you fine. Point, um, na connect mo to Bobby Fisher and... Oh, uh, that, yung, no, and yes. then people actually forgot that the chess tournament was held in Baguio. No? And so when I dug it up, this whole idea of hypnotism, and then it, it was so funny because the, the whole idea of um, parang there was even, uh, they, the police arrested a group that was blackmailing the Russian Saying, wow. na, if you don't pay us fifteen thousand dollars, we will cool them you to you to lose. No, I mean, and all those things. I guess people knew in the in nineteen seventy, but they had forgotten. No, so but Queen's Gambit brought it all up. Ne? But right. So it's uh, so that's the thing. I mean, you have to be curious all the time. I think right. uh, 
one of the things in life, not just for historians, is that curiosity is one of the things that makes us live. I, I keep telling my students that uh, you should not only see, you should notice. Because I mean, like, uh, we walk around every day. You know? we, don't, we don't mind our bodies. But let's say you fall and you have a, you have a cast or you have a wound on, on an extremity, like a leg or a, a hand. And then that's when you notice that people will step on it or you will bump it somewhere not because you're focused on it uh, and many times in life we we go through life and we don't really see we don't notice things no and a historian notices no um uh, so that, that's the thing i mean it's uh, it's second nature to me and i i'd like to think that it's something that i leave my i leave my students right. that they will never look at the past the same way they never see rizal the same way after they come to me and uh, rightly or wrongly, you know, you have enriched a life in, in that way or you but have I, ruined. I love life. how playful your brain works and how your powers of observation are so keen. Do you have like a repository for nuggets? Like if you have a eureka moment or an observation, do you like you, should it down. <laughs> you know what? I was so surprised because of my somebody asked for a file and uh, I dug it up and I just found it yesterday. I had whole folders, my notes from the 1980s. And then when I looked at it, all the people I met, I would, and they're all type written. Right? Elvira Manahan has three pages. Uh, you know, people I would meet, I would describe them, I would give what I thought about them. So it's a whole dossier, folders and folders. And okay. I'm not I'm not machaga anymore like that. So I said, and all my interviews were transcribed, um, wow. which I don't even do anymore. So I mean, I was already thinking this this material should go somewhere because I mean, right. when I die, they'll throw it sure. away. But it's somebody <laughs> else will be able to use it. You no. Know? Um, right. So I, that's what I've been doing now, just fixing what to throw away. Uh, I was telling my sisters, you know, I'm already saving you the trouble of all the important papers are in one folder. I'll tell you where they are. Uh, so you don't have to open each and every document. Because you don't know, eh, it might right. be important. And it will kill them just to open everything here. So I want to sort of... <laughs> Fix this time. Yeah, I don't know why itong, uh, or maybe the pandemic gave us, you know, intimations of mortality. Um, right. I'm sure. I'm sure. So I'm. I, I'll be. I'll be. I'll be 60 this year. So, di ba? I. I was so happy thinking of Actually. watching movies every day for free, and <laughs> that's gone, di ba? <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll see. But that's it. I mean, yung, yung, when I found my folders, I was wondering. Maybe I should, because we don't write anymore, di ba? Right. Uh, I had, you know, you we used to have notebooks and notebooks. Now, wala you, 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 you know. You can you, talk into your phone and then your phone or take take a picture. <laughs> oh, you know, or transcribe, which which speaking is why. Of I, your, sorry, speaking mm -hmm, of your sister, sabi ni Aleph, paano naging rock star yan? Binubuli lang namin siya nung bata kami. <laughs> so speaking <laughs> of that. What other factors do you attribute your success besides discipline, curiosity, being prolific? Ano pa? I mean, for a it's career to have spanned so long, it's luck. Luck. Uh, it's it's really sad, diba? Because uh, well, it goes both ways. I mean, Napoleon used to say that skill is nothing without opportunity, and opportunity is nothing either without skill. So That's it's a confluence, a confluence of both things. No, and my, my father used to tell me, alam mo, mas maraming magaling sa you eh. <laughs> maswerte, ka, maswerte ka lang, <laughs> di ba? Uh, and I said, what mo nasabi yan? And then he says, you know, you have built, not only because you have read, you have traveled, but you built a whole network. Sabi niya, you know, you, you want, you want to look at a Luna, you can enter a home in Forbes Park and they will open it and you will get access to stuff. And that's, that's what I realized nga na it's also luck and it's also building networks. Really? It's the whole idea of uh, of uh, access. No, I mean, you go into a library, if they won't show you the things, bali wala. If you cannot access the material, bali wala rin. So it's, uh, it's a confluence of two Cloud things. There. Cloud. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Or yun nga, you, it's also PR. No? Uh, historians are not known to be very sociable. <laughs> I'm I'm rather sociable uh, when I want to, but I'm I'm retiring by name. I mean, I spent five years as a Benedictine monk. No, um, I I have a I have a, a feeling for solitude because I guess a historian's life is really solitude. When in the end, when you're writing your column, you are alone. No, uh, uh, we're not like scient- scientists that they collaborate. Kaya and dami la like you know the vaccine has so many names, but historians are are lonely people. Eh? Uh, in the end, it's you and your material and what it is you're writing. So uh, there's that solitary streak, but uh, you must get out of the cave every every now and then, diba? And I guess you can't underestimate the power of social skills also when you talk about networking and cloud. Well, I know, uh, the late Andrew Gonzalez told me that once, uh, the president of La Salle, and, you know, he, he was very fond of me. He also helped bring me back and make me an academic. No, But uh, he used to tell me, you know, Ambet, you're like me. And I said, how can I be like you? You're 200 pounds. Uh, and then he said... Uh, <laughs> No, I said, I, I've watched you from afar. And he says, you're like me in that you can spot a social situation 10 feet away. He wow. says, this, this, this skill is not learned. It is, it is there. So Sabina, even before something erupts, you have already maneuvered. <laughs> and I said, ah, talaga, ganyan ba yan? Sabi niya, yes, you're, you're like that. No? Um, so that's why it worked for me when I, the nine years I was in government, I guess that was what, well, nine years in government, what, what kept me alive was that networking skill. And second was five years in a monastery. No, it gave me solitude. It taught me what was important. Uh, you know, um, when, when I think of people in government, and I usually wonder why people don't want to leave government, I realize that many people pala derive their self-worth from the office that they hold. So oh. when they are removed, wala na, di ba? I mean, I, it's not that I'm being mayabang about it or not, but I, I keep telling people that when I was invited to join, go- I was Ambeto Campo when I joined government. I was Ambeto Campo when I left. It was just an ornament to me. So in a sense, you know, you're different. So I mean, I could leave any time, and I didn't feel attached right. to the agency or having to do things which I would not like because I had to keep my job. No, um, so it's that. No, it's uh, knowing really where you stand and what you want to do. Right. So are you alarmed by how most Filipinos don't seem to have a good grasp of our own history? And what can you say about how history has been taught in schools, especially after the DepEd removed the dedicated history subject from high school? Well, they've always been doing that for the longest time. I mean, the most scandalous was when UP Diliman actually removed history and made it optional, no? Uh, which I think they did it because history had the most terror teachers, so they <laughs> wanted them to to survive. But I guess it's That's that. It's, uh, history is really about teaching, and uh, it's one of the things that I want to go into. So it's not just that I'm doing my online things. No, I want to be able to to bridge that gap. No, um, for the longest time, I used to wonder why DepEd could not fix the textbooks, and I was telling them, you know. Let's just make them factually correct. Let, we won't even argue about interpretation, but even yes. doing that. When you think about it, a DepEd secretary has over a million employees. That person has to, you know, has to be a manager. And to manage a shop, bur- uh, uh, you know, the extinguish fires, you, you don't have any time for education. It's just doing the job of administering this huge bureaucracy. So that's why I want to go into it. Like when I did my, my online teaching, all my recordings are still on a private YouTube channel because I'm not so happy with it. I mean, I just, I just talk. I mean, I want full production. And when it's full, when it's full production, sabi ko, I, I don't mind licensing this or... Opening right. it so that people can use it, right? Uh, 
a teacher can use it um, in class. Uh, they know it's it's reliable. It's based on research. It's entertaining, and then they can do other things. No, um, but that's it. No, so I I want I still want to write the the history textbook. But for me, I guess it's writing um, a general history of the Philippines for an interested an interested reader. There's no good. I mean, all our histories are textbooks. Right. Or academic books. We don't have fun books. I mean, my books are fun, but they're they're small columns. You no, know, like you know, this this new one, uh, volume right. fifteen. You no, know, uh, this is all the material. My main material is basically Rizal. But you know, somebody sent me once the 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 diary of Ferdinand Marcos. You no, know, and uh, you know, I I validated it and I've actually put it together from six different sources annotated it and uh, this is what i've been working on because we keep talking about marcos but you know it's all emotion the problem naman here is you have uh you have a self-referential biased source but, <laughs> uh, but again it's that you you will be able to find some truth even from a lying biased source so right. it, it will help us no and help us understand what he was like and why we became what we are you know um so it's that it's uh, being able to write that 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 general history i actually have a working title i might as well say it so that people won't steal it um the working title will be called Quezon's curse you know, oh. the story of the philippines and why is it Quezon's curse because Quezon is uh famous for having said I would rather have a country run like hell by Filipinos than a country like run like heaven by Americans. Right. And he got exactly what he wanted. Right. And we're, we're suffering from, from <laughs> that curse, no? And uh, so that's that's the way I want to show it. The Philippines, right. as I looked at it, we, we have been a whole series of, uh, you know, promises unkept or promises broken. <laughs> we, we have so much promise, but we never get there. And uh, it's not, you know, people like to blame history. And I keep telling people, you can't blame history. History has no mind. It has no force. Um, it's just a guide. It's people right. who make right. history. And the reason why we're in such a mess is because you don't you don't know your past. no. Um, and so probably if we know our past, then we can change the future that's the that's the right. working at the back working. of that at, at the back of your latest book you uh talk about how it's historical denialism instead of revisionism yeah. you want to elaborate no, I, mean, like we, we keep, I don't know because people are so lazy like you know when you say uh social distancing it's not social distancing it's physical it's distancing so. no uh we, we 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 should be social, but we should be physically distant. And you know, when they talk of the Marcoses, it's always historical revisionism. And then when I say they're not revising, because when you revise, you revise to correct. And right. when you correct, you deal with truth. But if you're it's the wrong going word. to do lies, it's it's not revisionism, it's denialism, or maybe there's some other word, but stop you, but voila. I keep telling them to stop using it. They still keep using it. So if you cannot even be precise about the terms that you use, how how will you change things? Right? Uh, it's it's a it's it's a kind of laziness, you no? Know, that's that's there. But I guess you, as an editor, you know that, diba? How to be how to be very precise with words. And I I, I tell young people today, alam mo ang kaibahan namin, kasi nung panahon na yon, you know, we had to type. Uh, it wasn't computer. We're not emailing our material. Sabi ko, you know, Leti Magsanok or Lorna Tirol would sit you down, look at your copy, you're waiting there, and then uupo para I changed this yeah. word. What, With the rest exactly, of Eva, what exactly do you mean? Right. So in right. a sense, you that was that was how you learned to write. But today, right. kasi, diba, they send in their copy, it's corrected. They look, wala na, diba? But it's yung actually... <laughs> diba? You know, if corrected at all. But yung right. sitting down with an editor who will tell you, ay, ito, ganito, this is not a precise word. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then in the newspaper office, I always like to look at, I don't know if you had that in, in your magazine, there was always a, a hall of shame, a list of shame 
all the errors in the paper no and then the, the editors would put the correction para oh, na pinakakawawa yung mga police reporter di ba parang uh, found oh, from the from, naked from the waist up di ba so parang ano suot yan pantalon nasa taas di ba or uh, shot in the parang you have ano yun you have two breasts and one chest so parang what do you mean di ba left right middle uh, and that's you, you learn precision no precision right. but that comes with the naman in email ko lang yung group hindi naman nakapaskill but no, um, <laughs> mabait ka na di ba no i mean you, when when i th- when i think of it in the daily express but the, you editors, the editors were really talaga mumura pupunitin yung copy di ba sabi ko why are they like that and then when i moved to the globe hindi na sila ganyan but that used to be the way Uh, journalists of a certain um, generation. generation were were taught, di ba? Um, and uh, like when I joined when I joined the Daily Express, it was a big it was a big row because parang batyan, di ba? We didn't advertise the position. And I remember uh, uh, Pocholo Romualde saying, "Bakit ako magantay pa? Ito nakakasulat na hindi ko pa hindi ko pa kuha. <laughs> So I mean, it, when I looked at my appointment, right. there was a big Colatilia na not as a president, but because the editor wanted him, so we will hire him. But uh, that's when I realized talaga na, yun, you really have to learn why right. you're there. So, Baka kaya nagkakanda mali-mali <laughs> yung ano, <laughs> nangyayari ngayon. And speaking of lies or whatever, myth building, hero creation, you've said that History can be weaponized to marginalize certain people or sectors of society mm. or imprison people in views not of their own making. Can you give the most alarming concrete examples of this happening right now and what can we all do about it? Or can yeah, we I mean, it? well, the most obvious is, you know, all these things coming out that saying that the best time of our lives was under the Marcos period. Oh, yeah. no? uh, and, uh, <laughs> and it, 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 I, I find it so because I I don't want to add to their numbers, but you have to watch them. And when when you watch their YouTube, it's full production, na ah. so right, sabi right. ko may budget. Sila, may budget sila tas eto ako ako baduy na baduy yung akin, <laughs> di ba? So I have to find I have to find a way. So yeah, and you see that in you see that in print, no? Ah, uh, especially online, di ba? When people are reacting in a very I mean for me. And I have seen it because I've, I've I've worked in in journalism a long time. It's it's really an assault on truth, de ba? Uh, people don't know who to trust because today, all the all the gatekeepers have been thrown out. Academia cannot be trusted. The press cannot be trusted. Government cannot be trusted. The judiciary cannot be trusted. So, parang everything is relative. Everything is you believe what you want to believe. And because there are no gatekeepers. Anyone can publish anything on the net. Right, there's right. there's no vet, there's no vetting. No, uh, right. I mean in a newspaper, and that's the thing, diba? Right? In a in a physical paper or magazine, there's there's really time for you to to think, to put things right. together, to to to, to craft check. a story, fact check. Today, ambilis eh, parang print now and then bawi later or correct right. later. But once you throw something on the net, it's forever. Uh, like. There's this every week na lang para is this uh, it, there's this picture of Rizal in Masonic garb. That's not even Rizal. So could just open your eyes, look at it. Does he look like it? And do you even have to ask me that? So could look at the picture. But it's not because it's on the net. They think it's real. So I mean it's uh, it's a generation that has to be taught how to be critical. I guess because of our upbringing, we grew up in martial law. Press was, you know, we don't trust we we don't trust anything at face value, you no. Know? But now right. you have you really have to check, di ba? So. Ito si Rizal ba to talaga? Ayan, di ba si Rizal na niya? Well, I posted that, di ba? But there's a picture of him na I mean, and Rizal is the most um, photographed hero. I mean, we have pictures of him from age 11 till the time that he is shot. And that's why in my Facebook page, I like to post these things that I know. I, I mean, like this picture. picture, you know, that will never be in your textbook because right. 
our heroes don't look hero heroic enough. But I like to think that heroes have to be humanized right. in order for them to be relevant. It's a different generation. A generation before us wanted heroes made of marble and bronze. They're unattainable. They are they, their example actually crushes people rather than keeps them. Right. So I mean I mean look at this the 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 great effort I go through just to just to find some funny pictures, no? Right. Uh, but I have a whole, I have a whole, well, that's why they were saying, you know, if I do my YouTube channel, they said, you have 40 years of content. You don't right. even have to research. You just have to read a, an old column or, you know, rehash it so that it will become relevant and then just read it. So it's that, it's, it's using. The nice thing about history is that the shelf life is long. Um, right expiration so right. it can be relevant all the time so and i it. love how you make an effort to show our heroes as human just like ordinary citizens and so we won't we'll realize that we too are capable of doing but for the past 30 years away no malaki yan kasi you know that generation hindi sila they don't like that eh parang gusto nila bayaning Marmol, but, but this one is, you know, you see them. Uh, I mean, even that little midget. <laughs> yeah, and looking engagement, yeah, because people got mad. Why were we using the word midget? No, and then I was bashed for using the word midget because the, the correct term is little people. So it's still a midget. Uh, <laughs> And you know, all this whole co political correctness, diba? Uh, but you're showing something from a time oh. when that was the word for mm. But that's the thing. Or like this one, this picture of Bonifacio, diba? Uh, unlike Rizal, who has many pictures, we only have this picture of Bonifacio. Right. He doesn't look like the monument, diba? Uh, and I'm sure he's still there. He doesn't know Naka-Americana, diba? So the hero of the masses is wearing a coat and a tie. And so our friends from Diliman, hindi, kasi wedding, ah, wedding picture pala, o nasan si Macy's? Right. Oh, wala, hindi makasagot, diba? Uh, and that's I it, like no? I like when you said, if you look close enough, you can see the fear. Oh, and then, dami rin nag, ano niya, what are you talking about? There's no fear, it's sunny. Sabi ko, no, look in the back. Diba? You know, and then like that that little girl, uh, yeah. she has no underwear and she's seated oh. in a very compromising position. Ah, so I, I mean, that, she's that's fertilizing I, the fruit. That's I mean, that's a more solo being paid paid of feeling, no? Uh, but uh, or this one, this one I really. Love you, you find a letter of uh, Amor Solon, they're talking about tumai ako ng matigas. No? Uh, Elis ko si Moseo ay nabas, nabasa akong mabuti at gutom na gutom ako at natae ako ng matigas. <laughs> Di ba so, when you think about it, it makes them human. Um, right. And uh, I mean, I'd like to think, I mean, our generation, kasi we're a generation in search of models, in search of heroes. Right. But you know, Bertolt Brecht used to say that cursed is a nation that has need for heroes. No, um, we shouldn't need them, but I think we do. We we want to be inspired. We want to do other things. So it also this. No, it's part of my historian's life. Right? This is two weeks in the Czech Republic. I go around the world just chasing Rizal, right? uh, which is quite a wonderful career. People would kill to be in my suitcase. Um, but that's it, diba? When you when you find your niche, uh, many things like this come uh, become second nature. Be your you. Netflix documentary title, Chasing Rizal, and then oh, go, hi, diba. Oh, diba. Or, or we'll see something else. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the cornerstone of your publishing career. How how many years has Rizal without the Actually, overcoat? Actually, it's last December. It's thirty years. No, so. Uh, Anvil and I are doing a 30th anniversary edition. I mean, it's been 30 years in print, no? Uh, and these are all the looking back books. So, I mean, when you think about it, I was telling Sandra Ramos, you know, you, many of your books are one, one shot wonders. You fin you, you sell one, you know, and one, one printing, and that's it. But sabi ko, this book has been there for 30 years, continuously in print. Right. No? So right. 
it must mean something. I don't know. Maybe it's a bad sign also that it's oh, been in print for 30 years. No? But, uh, but then I didn't... Nora does a cookbook. Oh, oh, diba? I didn't have I didn't have Rizal without the overcoat when I was a student. And, you know, my history would have been totally different if I had such a book. So Besides Rizal without the overcoat, what is your next favorite? Hmm, wala eh, di ba? Wala. You're always looking at the next wala. book to write. No? So, well, I just finished a book for the Banco Central, which is uh, about money. And unfortunately, well, I hope to write a smaller book because most people will not get the, the book. Ayan, that's my library. So, yun then people, my sister used to say, I know you should post some things of you inside your workspace so people will know what it looks like no? so that's medyo malinis na siya for for, <laughs> pic for picture taking right. no? but most of the time the table is full but uh that's it that's, uh, and so this is the other book yaman it's called yaman yeah so it's yeah. about reflections on money uh why money is the way that it is or how we treat money it's a fun book it's not a numismatic book because most right. Most money books are always talking about circulation and <laughs> mintage, and I know, of course, I'm, it is talking about many things. No, so these are your new Zoom classes. Uh, that's my new Zoom. That's why I like not doing Zoom because, as you can see, my classes are huge and I can't memorize my students' names, but with right. Zoom, I can see their names, diba? so I don't right. have to memorize their names. And then, if you're not camera is not on, I'll call you, diba? so I will know if you are not. If you're sleeping or you're not there, no. But right. I, I actually miss it, no. So I miss. Uh, I mean, in a human classroom, because you there are many nonverbal cues. They laugh at a joke. I know I have right. engaged. Uh, I know if the 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 attention is waning, so I can right. I can. No, but here it has to be different. So even recording, no. My lectures are not longer than twenty minutes, fifteen minutes max, which is a TED talk. Uh, right, because right. that's their attention span. Right? attention no? span. <laughs> so, but the end, I keep telling them, you can rewind. You can fast forward. Diba? You can delete. Uh, so those are the things also a, a, a professor has to think about today. Diba? That the student, if they get bored, will fast forward or will stop. Right. So uh, you, you really have to engage. And uh, I think right. that's one of the things that I got, I, I know you're, almost naturally. If you're reading on the level of interest or passion of Generation Z and millennials about learning about history, are you hopeful? I think they're, I think they're interested. That's why there's so much uh, interest in heritage, uh, interest in things of the past. No, uh, They want to look back. Um, it's also part of tourism. Diba? I mean, like Intramuros suddenly is you know, one of our most photographed uh, tourist areas, no? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's built in, eh? I guess, if it's presented in a good way or in an engaging way. I mean, like, you know, you can read about Intramuros all the time, but when you walk on the walls of Intramuros, that's the biggest, you know, stud, uh, study guide that you can get, the best visual aid that you can get. It's bigger than you. You walk inside it. You get a sense of what it's like in the past. So now that we're doing Intramuros, our shrines, uh, it's easier for students to relate if they take the time. Diba? But how many people will actually go unless you force them to go? I mean, I used to think that the National Museum, masaya na sila to get what? Five five hundred thousand in a year. So we could, that's what Moa gets on a bad day. Oh uh, so, uh, why, why is it so easy for people to enter a mall and so right. hard to get them into a museum? So th there must be something we're not doing right. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. But there are lots of things that you're doing right. <laughs> what I hope so. Diba? I hope so. Hopes and dreams for the Pinoys in terms of being more connected with history, given that we have such a short memory. And if we say that history does not repeat ourself, itself, we are certainly repeating history. So what, what are your hopes and dreams and suggestions? No, I think most people, if they, if they get to know their past, then they can change it. I mean, uh, 
I always tell people that, you know, when when people say yung ano yun, ang hindi marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan, di makararating sa paroroonan, and they say, Jose Rizal, that's not true. He never said that. He never uh, said that. He, he didn't say, ang hindi marunong, ano yun, ang hindi magmahal sa sariling wika, masahol pa sa hayop at malansang isda. The two most quoted lines of Rizal are not by Rizal at all. Oh my God! Uh, but Rizal actually left us with a wonderful quote, which which I've published and now I'm glad that people are using it. Rizal said in Spanish, he said, I enter the future carrying a memory of the past, which means we are not imprisoned by the past. We're not paralyzed by the past. We actually go forward, but we always carry that memory of the past because that is what gives context to the present. So the whole idea, again, of uh, moving forward or moving on, you don't move on by forgetting. You move on by remembering and bringing that with you into the future. So that for me is, you know, the best uh, thing that Rizal left us, no, to remind us that we should continually enter the past, not to be not to be scared of the future, but to enter the future with hope and to enter the future carrying a bit of the past. Wow! <laughs> and I think that's the best way to end our chat. Thank you yeah, so much, Amber. So well. Thank you very much for having me. I hope. Um, and People think, don't get bored, right? Enlightenment. We're looking forward to your future books, especially the pandemic series, <laughs> which yeah. I hope uh, will not take years. <laughs> no, I already told uh, Sandra. So we have the 30th anniversary Rizal book, uh, which I'm already putting new pictures in. And I already did... Uh, the outline for the two small books right. and then we're doing two two big books pan so right. it's nice uh, at least you know in the pandemic i just hope that people will still buy books no um right. <laughs> but it keeps writers like us uh, going for i mean that's why i'm amazed by you you've uh, transitioned into this telma san juan has her diarist ph uh, so i'm thinking i must do something like yeah. that so there must be an online platform yeah. Also, which yeah. is which is a different way of uh, doing things, but okay. to still make physical book. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you. All right. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you, everyone. This has been TikTok, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.